Section 2.5, uh, further applications of right triangles. Uh, we're going to take a look at three problems here uh, and extend our knowledge on uh, using right triangles to solve uh, real world situations. And there are really only two types of problems in this section. One involves uh, what we call bearing. And there are two ways uh, a bearing can be written or recorded, so we'll look at both of those methods. And then our, our final problem, we'll look at uh, determining the height uh, of an object uh, when given when given two two angle measures as to the um, viewing the, viewing the top of that object, which that that'll make more sense when we get to the uh, to the example itself. So let's start with bearing. Uh, two methods for measuring bearing, and bearing is is related to the angle uh, that's involved um, to some object. So so method one uh, in terms of bearing is that the angle measure that you're given is always measured in terms of a clockwise angle from north. Here's what I mean by that. So let's assume we have two radar stations located at points A and B and A and B are located on an east-west line so those are directly across from one another. A is uh, west of, of B and uh, those two radi uh, radar stations are 3.7 kilometers apart which we have labeled here. Station A detects a plane out here at point C on a bearing of 61 degrees. So again I mentioned that the first method of bearing is let's assume we're standing here at, at station A looking north. Well the angle that's involved that I rotate clockwise that puts me on a traje trajectory or path to the plane is 61 degrees. So this angle 61 degrees always measured clockwise with this uh, method of bearing. And then at the same time uh, at station B uh, they detect the same plane however their angle involved for bearing is 331 degrees. So imagine standing here at B looking north. I have to go clockwise 331 degrees that puts me on a path to the plane. So that's why that's that's explaining the 331 degrees that you see here and the 61 degrees that we see here. Now what we don't know yet is the angle measure 29, 61, and I have no idea that this is a right angle yet. So let's explain why those angles are what they are. Well, since A and B are on an east-west line, and I'm looking north from A, I know this needs to be a right angle. So this is 61 degrees of the 90, therefore 90 minus 61 tells me that this angle is 29 degrees this angle is 331 degrees. Well the entire circle, the whole way around would be 360. So 360 minus 331 is 29 degrees. So this angle inside, 29 degrees, this angle. And again this needs to be a right angle, north, south, east, west. So again 90 minus 29 tells me that this angle inside the triangle is 61 degrees. We know that the angles of a triangle must add up to be 180. 29 plus 61 is 90, so therefore this angle needs to be 90, telling us that we're now working with the right triangle. Now we're ready to find uh, find B, solve the solve the problem, right? Find the distance from station A to the plane. So we want to find B. So we'll use one of our trig functions. We can say that the sine of 61 degrees is equal to opposite side b over hypotenuse 3.7. So b, cross multiply the proportion, b is equal to 3.7 times the sine of 61 degrees. So make sure your graphing calculator is in uh, degree mode. Take 3.7 times the sine of 61 and you should get 3.24 uh, kilometers. So the distance from uh, station A to the plane is approximately 3.24 kilometers. <clears throat> Let's take a look at method two and I want you to just first notice how the angles are labeled. So we're no longer working with an angle measured uh, clockwise from north. We're now given two directions and an angle measure. So notice like for example we, we are given here south 52 degrees east, 
from point A to point C. I'll, I'll, I'll explain the problem in a minute. I just want you to see how the bearing is written in relation to what it was in the first problem. So when you see south 52 degrees east, that means we're going to start at a point, look in that guy's direction. So we're going to pretend we're looking south, and then we're going to go 52 degrees towards east. So looking south, 52 degrees towards east would give us this angle. So we'll look at that again uh, as, we, as we work through the problem. So it says the bearing from A to C, point A to point C, is south 52 degrees east. The bearing from A to B is north 84 degrees east. And the bearing from B to C is south 38 degrees west. A plane flying at 250 miles per hour takes 2.4 hours to go from A to B. Find the distance from A to C. So here we are, point A, point C. We're looking for this distance B. Let's first take a look at where does this 600 miles come from, from point A to point B. We know that the plane is flying at 250 miles per hour, and it takes 2.4 hours to go from A to B. So we take 2.4 times 250 miles per hour, telling us that this distance is 600 miles. Let's go ahead and look, take a look at some of the angles that we know, the ones in red. I had mentioned already that from point A to point C, here is our bearing. So we're going to start at A, and we're going to look south, look south, and we're going to go 52 degrees east. So that puts me on the path from A to C. So we'll draw some ray in that direction. And then we're going to go from A to B. So from A to B, from A to B, we're going to look north, look north, and go 84 degrees in east direction. So north, 84 degrees east. Draw this ray from A to B. And then the bearing from B to C. Here I am at B. B to C. Well, we start at B, and we look south, and we go 38 degrees in west direction which gives us the 84, the 52, and the 38. So now the next question is, where in the world did they come up with this 96 degrees? I mean, remember, we, we, have, we, do, we do not know at this time that this angle is 44, and this angle is 46, and this angle is 96. So let's, let's, uh, let's explain where those values come from. We know that all three of these angles must add up to give you 180, a straight angle. We have 52 and we have 84 already labeled so if I add those two together subtract that from 180 we get the angle inside to be 44 then this north-south line and this north-south line would be parallel if I use segment AB as a transversal then this whole angle here and this whole angle would be alternate interior angles they're congruent these two add up to give you 96, therefore this angle must also be 96. Now that I know that this angle is 96, this angle and this one that I don't know yet, and this one must add up to be 180, so I add 96 plus 38, take that sum, uh, subtract from 180, giving us 46, and then 44, 46 plus this angle must add up to be 180, so again, 44 and 46, that sum is 90, forcing this to be a 90-degree uh, a angle. So now we, now we know that we're working with a right triangle. Let's find distance B. So again, we can use the sine function. We can either take the sine of 46, or we can take the cosine of 44. I'll just say the sine of 46 degrees. Sine of 46 degrees is equal to opposite B over hypotenuse 600. So B is approximately equal to 600 times the sine of 46 degrees. So using calculator, we're looking at about 431.6 miles. Uh, the last problem that I'd, I'd take, like to take a look at uh, deals with angles of elevation. And I mentioned this too earlier at the beginning of the video. 
um, our job is to find the height of some object when we are given uh, bearing from uh, not only say bearing but we're given angle of elevation from two locations so notice here we are at point D and I have to look up 22.2 .2 degrees to see the top of the tree and then if I move closer to the tree actually 50 feet closer to the tree from point A I have a second reading where you know it's, it's going to be a little bit steeper to look up at the top of the tree so we have that being 36.7 degrees so with the information that we're given uh, we, we still can find um, uh, the height of the tree H so let's take a look at the diagram again we're starting at point D we take a, an angle of elevation to the top we're going to move 50 feet closer to the tree here we are at point A take a second reading and uh, we, we don't know what this is and we're looking for um, height of the tree I want you to realize we have two right triangles involved two right triangles we have a small right triangle ACB and we have a larger right triangle involved BDC so let's start with the smaller right triangle uh, what trig function could I use I could say that the tangent of 36.7 degrees equals opposite H over adjacent side X and at the same time using the tangent function with the big right triangle we can say that the tangent of 22.2 .2 degrees equals opposite side H over the whole adjacent side so if this is 50 feet and this is X feet the whole thing would be X plus 50 feet now let's take both of these trig uh, equations and let's cross multiply both of them cross multiply the one on the left we would get H equals X times the tangent of 36.7 degrees and over here we would get H equals the quantity X plus 50 times the tangent of 22.2 .2 degrees both of these equations are solved for H so using substitution right if this guy if, if this expression equals H and this expression equals H then the two expressions must equal one another so that gives us X tan 36.7 degrees must equal quantity X plus 50 times tangent of 22.2 .2 degrees now I want you to realize on the right hand side of this equation the tangent of 22.2 .2, that's just a number so here we have a number in front of or beside a set of parentheses you know involving some sum or difference so I got to use the distributive property here so the left hand side will stay X tan 36.7 degrees and now using distributive property we would get X times tangent of 22.2 .2 degrees plus 50 times tangent 22.2 .2 degrees and when solving any equation I want to get the terms with the variable in it on the same side of the equation so here's a term with X here's a term with X not a term no, no X in this term so let's bring this term to the left so we're gonna have X tan 36.7 degrees minus X tan 22.2 .2 degrees equals 50 tan 22.2 .2 degrees now the reason why I'm not evaluating these uh, these got these trig functions here tangent of 22.2s and threes is I want to keep everything exact until the final answer and then we'll go ahead and, and convert that to a decimal and round uh, if you round throughout the problem and use those results then to round some final answer then you're, you're losing accuracy so you want to keep everything in terms of uh, the tangent of your angle until, until the very end so let's continue on on the left hand side I have both of my terms with X uh, on the left so we can factor out the X and we're left with 
tangent of 36.7 degrees uh, minus tangent 22.2 degrees. All of that equals 50 tangent 22.2 degrees. And then to get x by itself, we'll divide both sides of the equation by this big quantity. So x equals 50 tan 22.2 degrees over tangent 36.7 degrees minus tangent 22.2 degrees. So now the next challenge is we want to enter this into the graphing calculator correctly. So it's the whole numerator, right? The whole numerator divided by the whole entire denominator. So here we go. Let's type this in as follows. Left parenthesis, 50 times the tangent of 22.2, making sure your calculator is in degree mode. So there's the whole numerator divided by, left parenthesis, tangent 36.7 degrees minus the tangent of 22.2 degrees. Close that, close that. And that gives us 60.49. Now that is not the final answer. Remember what we just solved for, right? We solved for x and if we go up to the original problem, we're looking for h. So how do I find x? Well, or h. Well, currently in my calculator window, right, this is x. So notice if we go back far enough, we see, oh, to get h, it's simply x times the tangent of 36.7. So currently in my calculator window, right, I have x. Here sits x. So all I'll do is say times the tangent of 36.7 degrees. And I'll hit enter one more time. And there's the height of our tree. Uh, everything's measured in feet. So you would say that your tree is approximately uh, 45 feet tall.